Kal Halal Yamla Yahawa Bahasham Yahaw Shar Bahasham Racha Kodesh. That being all praises to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahawa, in the name of Yahawa Shai, who is the name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, and the Heavenly Father who the world calls God, Jehovah, various other names, his true name that we know by faith is Yahawa. Right, so we give all praises to the Heavenly Father Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, in the name of His Son Yahweh Shai. I want to go through the topic. I made it easy for myself. I just put upon persecution, KJVA with audio app, which is a very good app. Right, it's got all the scriptures in, which is the so-called Old Testament, the so-called New Testament, and the so-called Apocrypha. Now, the Testament. And I might get sidelined, you know, we might even not touch this topic at this rate. Old Testament means a covenant. Alright, that's its that's its verbatim meaning. So if you say the old covenant, the old testament, they're one and the same. Now the old covenant was made with the Israelites. And the new covenant, believe it or not, was made with the Israelites. You know, contrary to popular belief and it really is a popular belief that is for all all, all nations, all people. There's one covenant that is for all, and that was the rainbow, the bow in the cloud, the promise that the Lord will not flood the earth again, right? and the Lord will not go back on his word. That's the covenant that all these nations can you know, claim, or say that they're a part of. They can't say they're a part of the new covenant, or even the old covenant. When you go to Jeremiah 31, that's chapter 31, and verse 31, it tells you who it's for, which is for the house of Israel, the house of Judah, the two houses of Israel, which is the all of the, the whole nation is called Israel. We had the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, and the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom. Right, and that's who the covenants for. And those people would be persecuted. Right, would be under the foot of the enemy, the adversary. So it's only right that those people that suffered that and went through that are the ones that gain the kingdom. Right, they get the kingdom. Like it says in Acts 14 and 22, which is on this topic, but it's not going to come up on this word search because the word is tribulation. But it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them that we, through much tribulation, will enter the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem So you have to understand that it's not just a walk in a park, right? It's easy. We were given a very easy guideline, right? But in practice, with how wicked this world is, you know, there can be very many stumbling blocks and very many snares, right? But the yoke is easy, the burden is light. Or is it the, bur the yoke is light, the burden is easy, right? So we've got a very simple task, right? But the execution, there'll be stumbling blocks along the way. That's why you have to take comfort in this word so you don't get sidelined or sidetracked. You're know, trying to take comfort in the world, watching your entertainment programs. Then you start thinking like the devil because he's w uh, woven his wine up in that his doctrine, his philosophy, right, divergent from the Heavenly Father. So this is Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 5, it says, Our necks are under persecution, we labour and have no rest. And that is us, that is the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American from, from ages, from time, but especially in this final captivity, and it is the final captivity, you got man teaching you're going to slavery again in Arabia, that's bullshit. This is the last captivity, the main head point, being that so-called so called United States of America, which biblically is Babylon the Great, right? we've gone through persecution from the inception and prior to the inception of that nation there. Right, that was built off the back of the so-called black man's slave labor. Built off the back of the land cultivation methods taught. It's said in history that it was taught from the Native Americans. We know he probably did some slick shit, right? Yeah, they probably betrayed him which is document, documented evidence on that in many cases or you know did it by force and again his track record would stand to support that that hypothesis so and when you go into this it says i think it's the next verse it talks about the egyptians and the syrians yeah verse six it says we have given the hands to the egyptians and to the assyrians to be satisfied with bread and those were two oppressors to oppress rulerships that were over us, right? Egypt, we became a, a nation in Egypt. Obviously, every, the world and his wife, as they say, 
knows the story about the Israelites in ancient Egypt. Maybe they don't know the de depth of it, but they at least know the so-called um, the Easter story, right? The Easter. They like to make out that the Pasach HaPasach, which is the Passover in ancient Hebrew, right? Is Easter has got anything to do with Easter? Of course, it does not. Easter's idolatry, paganism, heathenism, right? Believing in eggs and bunnies. Bear with me. Yeah, the Easter bunny, that's nonsense. You know, but that's another another proof that this devil's got his hand in everywhere. You know, and tries to write over what the truth actually is. Write over what's right. Right, and, and write grievous decrees. Or however it's worded, Isaiah 11, I think that is. Not, it can't be Isaiah 11. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1. And I warn to them that decree ungodly decrees, paraphrasing. That, that's this devil. Right, we'll get into this parable, right, which a lot of it's going to ring true, you know, as we progress in this existence from the word of the Israelites gone out, or the word of the Heavenly Father, excuse me, unto the Israelites, you know, and relayed through those prophets, you know, paraphrasing. I can't even remember how to paraphrase that, so I'll hold on that for now. Which is um, basically great. Great are those that published the word of the heavenly Father, right? And that's not not a too accurate paraphrase, but that's the general idea. I mean, great, great be the company of those who published it. So I would paraphrase that. You know, so the Lord, which it all it all comes from on high. You know, no man can take credit for it. It's like it's like a pot. Uses use a similar analogy Apostle Paul did. It's like a pot going going on like he's so he's so big and bad. You, you didn't make yourself a pot, right? You were made into a pot. So we didn't make ourselves into this truth. You know, John four, six and forty four. No man can come to me unless the Father hath drawn me, hath drawn him. Sorry, and I, I'll raise him up at the last day. Right, so no one comes in this truth of their own idea. Right, it's the Heavenly Father who's in control of all that. Although some men, as it say, a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Roughly, paraphrase. So we'll get into this parable. Right, because persecution is on the on the way. Right, if it's not already here. And the, the seeds are being sown, right? Certain things. Your favorite celebrity that brought up this truth, right? There's many angles they can go and push that and tell you why he's a devil, why he's no good, and why, therefore, his philosophy and anyone that espouses similar is also a bugged out retard, which is what they want everyone to believe. And all retard means is to be slow again. All right, Matthew 13. And 18, it says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. It says, When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Alright, so this is the parable explained. It says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it, receiveth it yet hath he not not root in himself but dureth for a while right dureth where you get the term endure to be to be hard basically like durable right something's durable it's hard but dureth for a while for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word by and by he is offended all right and there's many as i can name ten thousand no joking but i can name many israelites that got offended you know, when the, the seas doctrine so-called came out, which is really, it's just breaking down a verse in the scripture, right? But many men got offended at that, right? Some people, yeah, I get it. I understand it. You broke it down correctly, but I'm not going to teach that. You know, you're you're, you're uh, hiding the full counsel. You're shunning to declare the full counsel of the Lord, right? Why? Because you think people will get offended. 
or a woman won't like it or you won't be able to bring money in you know it'll offend a brother that's just man fuck that shit just to be raw with it forget that it doesn't matter right the the world's mor- morality and morals are whimsical right they fly around as the wind right and many people get tossed to and fro with every doctrine like the wind but that's a very solid doctrine and when you go to the translations you go to the ancient word you have the older languages the greek which is somewhat older and the hebrew which is the ancient language yeah well i guess greek would be considered ancient you know what i mean from way before that was the hebrew and it holds true now if you start going into words and going into translation, there's no way you can come out with what these other Greeks term that yeah, but they paint us out to be ridiculous or bugged out. And that's exactly what the scripture said.